I'm going to hand it over to my good friend Kevin Jackson now. Kevin Jackson, as many of you know, is the author of the book, The Big Black Lie. If you haven't got your copy, now is a great time to get your copy. Kevin is also runs the blog, The Black Sphere. And without further ado, Mr. Kevin Jackson. Always like following a guy who carries a firearm. They said the union guys are going to be out here to get us. So uh, this guy's packing in case they show up. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's right. This is Texas. It's conceal and carry. <laughs> All you guys are packing. All right. I like that. Well, Texas is my hometown, and I always like to tell people how happy I am to be here. So, uh, or my home state, I should say. So I'm happier than a, a Michael Vick pound pup to be here with you folks. <laughs> yeah, all you radicals. You know how mean you are with your your uh, your guns. I can see this guy right here. He's got a gun in his uh, thing. It's bulging out from there. I can see it. <laughs> anyway, the Tea Party Patriots are about financial, fiscal responsibility, living in government and free markets. And I uh, appreciate you guys coming out to support us with this tour and the, the, uh, the farmers in California. Uh, for those of you who may recognize me a little bit, I was on Glenn Beck Friday, and I'll be back on in a couple of weeks. Glenn and I are buddies now. <laughs> Everybody comes up to me and say, hey. Tell Glenn hello for me. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, today I want to talk to you guys about the irony of liberals. In an effort to reclaim our republic, on 9-12, about 2 million uh, patriots went to march on Washington, and the media said that it wasn't so. They actually said there's only a few thousand people, and as my, my, uh, one of the earlier speakers talked about, he said that there were uh, obviously two million of them, and he was one of them. So um, I'm happy that you guys uh, were able to make it, and I'll tell you that you are making a difference in case you didn't know that. So you should give yourselves a hand for that. Washington says we are angry, but I say that we are disgusted, and we have a right to be. We're witnessing the most amazing attempt to dismantle America than anybody's, anybody's, uh, knowing about it from within the sound of my voice, what I can tell you is that the enemy outside is nothing compared to the enemy within, and the enemy is liberals. Liberals say they are open-minded, and I say open minds are empty heads. Liberals say they are tolerant, and I say their tolerance equates to believing nothing. I'm going to translate that for you using the words of a black conservative and ex-NFL football player Jim Brown. He says, a liberal will cut off your legs to hand you a crutch. So my book, The Big Black Lie, focuses on racism and elitism and how liberals use race and class as weapons to demagogue everything. When cornered, the left will admit to their racism, but they say their racism is all in the past. To them I say, you lie, boy. Racism by the left is front and center. You don't have to know what to look for. You need to know who to look for. And here are a few examples. Janine Garofalo calls us teabaggers. Say we're a bunch of white supremacists out here and that you patriots are out to get me. Garofalo bolsters her arguments by using the racist past of Democrats. She says that we are all members of the Klan. So I have to remind Ms. Garofalo in a video that the Ku Klux Klan was a Democrat organization. I'm not a racist nor a sexist, but I believe that black people, people who have overcome slavery and the lack of civil rights, are not in need of a weirdo white chick from Hollywood to be our protector. And it is racist of Garofalo to think that we do. Maureen Dow pulled the race card on Joe Wilson, even adding boy to his statement. She said that Wilson didn't want to kowtow to the president because he was black. And I'm glad that Maureen Dowd was good enough to explain to us what Joe Wilson was trying to say. Or who knows what conclusion we might have come to because we might have concluded that the president was lying like a no-legged dog. 
And we had Jimmy Carter. His brains were leather. He couldn't saddle a June bug. The worst ex-president in the history of America weighing in, saying that he needed to protect the most powerful man in the world, the president of the United States, because he was black. Now that is racist and insulting. Who better than a Southern Democrat to spot a racist? And they want to convince you that, that the Dixiecrats all moved to the Republican Party, and to them I say, you lie, boy. Even the White House tried to distance themselves from Jimmy Carter, saying, well, Jimmy's a good dog, but sometimes he crafts a little too close to the porch. In 2005, then Democrat National Committee Chairman Howard Dean joked that the Republicans couldn't match the diversity of the Democrat unless they invited the hotel staff. When a Democrat insults black people, you never hear about it. Now Obama says he's above the race issue, and in case you don't believe it, here it is in his own words from Dreams of My Father. I ceased to advertise my mother's race at the age of 12 or 13 when I began to suspect that by doing so I was ingratiating myself to whites. I found solace in nursing a pervasive sense of grievance and animosity against my mother's race. She was white, by the way. Liberals are racist, whether they are black or white. They want to convince you that you are the racist, and they use racism to impose their will. Well, they can put your boots in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. In the economy, we have six million jobs lost that the White House reports and because of stimulus, jobs have been created. And the stimulus is working so well, it may be solving our illegal immigration problem because illegal immigrants are leaving the country to find other jobs. Liberals like Acorn will plant criminals in your neighborhoods and then say they need more money to do what? Fight crime. And liberals like Eric Holder will prosecute patriots instead of fighting real crime. In a world outside of America, poor is defined as not knowing where your next meal is coming from, and I can tell you that the poor in America are rich by other countries' standards. Only in America do homeless take pictures of Michelle Obama with their cell phones. Only in America do people on welfare get their hair done, get manicures and pedicures, own Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Coach handbags, wear makeup, have cable TV, $150 tennis shoes, diamond earrings, pimped up cars, and no jobs. And one of America's poor who's on our tax dollars had the nerve to dial 911 with her well manicured nails to report that her 52 inch plasma display had been stolen from her subsidized home. Folks, liberals are snake oil salesmen. Is this thing on? <laughs> and the latest flavor of snake oil is health care. It reminds me of a game my brother and I used to play as kids called Smell My Finger. It smells so bad, in fact, that they made health care a Kennedy trying to clean it up. But whatever they decide to call it, Kennedy Care, or more appropriately, drunk, murderer, rich boy, rich playboy care. At the end of the day, it is simply control care. Our health care system needs work, but since when has government impressed you with its ability to run a program? Here's some examples. Social Security, the Postal Service, Medicare, they're all broke. I, I will tell you that government health care is just another turn in the punch bowl. But liberals want to control you from the cradle to the grave. They want to determine if you can be born, and they want to determine when you die. Through clever and constant application of propaganda, people can be made to see paradise as hell, and also the other way around, and to consider the most wretched sort of life as paradise. Adolf Hitler.